Aloha and welcome back to Talk Story with John Waihe. We have a special show for you this afternoon. We are going to be on the air for an hour instead of the usual half an hour. And the reason is that the topic of our conversation this afternoon will be the governor's power to veto legislation. And as we all know, and as we all were taught from our first grade classes, the governor has the ability to veto any bill that the legislature passes, a subject, of course, to the legislature not taking a vote of a two-thirds vote, two-thirds of both houses of the legislature then would have the power to override the governor's veto. So let me begin by introducing our distinguished guests this afternoon, the, the authorities on gubernatorial and governmental um, shenanigans and actions and whatever. So we have with us today... Uh, first of all, from the University of Hawaii, the director of the Public Policy Center, right? That's and, right. Um, and uh, oh my goodness! And we also have with us uh, an editor from the. Um, uh, oh, <laughs> I am getting lost because Colin, Colin, is here from the University of Hawaii, and Chad Blair. <laughs> From, uh, well, you got to tell us what Civil Beat. Civil Beat. I know it's Civil Beat, but what's your, what's your, you're the editor? So? I, uh, you know, there's a lot of people think that, but there's a misconception out there. I am an editor. I'm the public, uh, rather the politics and opinions editor. Oh, yeah, I'm, so. I'm so glad. I kept looking up on that machine for your <laughs> title, and it threw me all appear. off. And, <laughs> <laughs> so, Chad Blair and... Colin, what am I doing? <laughs> Don't worry, we're not live, Colin. Yeah, that's right. We are live. That's the problem. We Colin are Moore. Colin Moore. What am I doing? That's because I'm, I've just got you're, too you're much. You're so of, invested in these it, bills. It was happening. And, 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 and then when you look at the TV, there was no title. So that, that screwed me up. But anyway, we're going to be talking about what the government's going to do. Now. The process, uh, as it's set out in the Hawaii State Constitution, is that the governor has to either sign or veto a bill by the 45th day uh, after the end of the legislative session. And that would be uh, July 9th, July 9th coming up. Now, prior to that, 10 days prior to that, which would be next week, Monday, um, June 24th, uh, he has to send, a, send notice to both houses of the legislature detailing which uh, bills he intends to um, veto. So here we are, one week before that great event, and I thought it would be fun this afternoon if we, uh, first of all, discuss the process and uh, discuss uh, what he might be vetoing in, in the future. Now, um, as you know, Chad, you, you did an article yeah. about the bills that he has already signed. Right. And, and, Governor, as you well know from your time in office, in addition to suggesting your intent to veto or perhaps your intent to sign, you can also, the governor, let the bill go without your signature, oh, right, right? Right. That's without another thing you can do, right. which kind of says, well, I'll just let it go. I believe that's what Governor Burns did way back in the day regarding the, the abortion rights bill. Yeah, the abortion rights bill. Pretty big deal, he being a Roman Catholic. and uh, It was a big deal. It was, and, yeah. and, and actually, this is a kind of a real policy moment for most governors because it really, well, it tests your beliefs. It tests your politics, I too. Mm -hmm. I mean, because there, this becomes an, uh, an intense moment when all of the people who were lobbying at the state legislature uh, <laughs> now come in to see you. Right. Right. you know, one, uh, and, and they're doing new, something new this year, and that is they're running ads. I was just going to mention that, the they're, REIT ads. Right, right, right. They're running ads telling the public, not just the governor, the public, how 
how they feel about uh, a particular bill. This is the bill to tax real estate investment trust, mm -hmm. uh, essentially levy a corporate tax on these organizations that own tens of millions of dollars of property, including Alamoana Shopping Center, Manoa Marketplace, Manoa Marketplace, Hilton Hawaiian Village, and it includes organizations like Alexander and Baldwin, which shifted to REIT status a couple years ago. So they used to pay corporate taxes, and now they... At this yeah, moment, because of the, the way the, they have the, a better tax the treat. tax books work. Yeah, and so the idea is that we're missing a good chunk of change in revenue that could go right into our, our general fund. And sure enough, uh, the REITs, the National REIT Organization, as well as some local groups, spending heavily. They couldn't quite defeat it at the legislature. In fact, it passed pretty well. Mm -hmm. But now they're running these, these ads saying, oh, you can't do this, it's going to hurt you. And, and, and the so ads forth. are getting more... And more sophisticated. It was kind of, to be really honest, it seemed like it was kind of sloppy in the beginning. But now they're getting out there. They're talking about not only losing construction jobs, no. they're talking about affordable housing, housing this and, is local and, and people, investments, yeah. and, you know, bad uh, business climate and all of that. And for most people that may not know what, um, What's what, the, what the REIT are all about, is that they are investment vehicles, supposedly more long-term investment vehicles in real estate that don't pay uh, income taxes, income taxes, or any kind of special corporate income tax. What they do is that they're supposed to take whatever profits they make and give it right back uh, to the shareholders. Right. That's so right. now you're getting shareholders being told, that's actually your money. <laughs> you know, so this is going to be pretty interesting. What do you think the governor's going to do? I think he's. I think he's not going to veto this bill. I mean, I think there's there was a lot of certainly a lot of support for it in the legislature. I mean, they they did mount this fairly sophisticated campaign and an interesting one to encourage him to veto it. But I don't think the REITs are very sympathetic political figures. I mean, you're. you're I mean, the, the major issue with the REITs is that a lot of those shareholders are not. Hawaii state residents. And so they're not paying Hawaii taxes on that revenue they're getting from the REITs. And I think that was what gave the legislature a lot of support to pass this, this bill, well, which is a 6.4%. What about the business climate? The business climate uh... Right. So the claim from, from, from the REITs themselves is this will lower investment. Um, you know, they, they won't be investing in areas that have seen a lot of redevelopment, like, for example, Manoa Marketplace. Um, it won't be as an attractive vehicle for investors from other places to attract capital to Do you Hawaii. think that, does that make any sense? That, you know, if, as the backstop in all of this, that's the governor's job. Sure. I mean, he's the catcher, right? So he's the guy that's supposed to be concerned about the business climate and the image and, and all of that. But um, you, you, don't, you don't get a feeling on that? I don't get a feeling that he's going to veto this. Okay. What about you? I agree. He might even sign it. The temptation for any governor, any executive, to have extra revenue coming to the state. I've heard different figures, but I, the figure of $60 million mm -hmm. annually seems to stick in my mind. There's another figure for that Airbnb bill, which I know we'll talk about later. Yeah. But I think the governor has to look at that. He also represents the people. Frankly, there's just not a whole lot of sympathy for corporations in this day and age. I recognize that A and B is a long-standing former Big Five company. With but deep A and B roots. were also the people that went after a bill that you know it's not not up, but that we all. Are you talking about the, the water bill? bill? The water yeah, bill. Yeah, they, you know. And, although it's amazing because they famously did not testify on the mm -hmm. bill. All their lobbying was behind closed doors. But there's no question that Alexander and Baldwin wanted that A and B water bill to extend for seven years those uh, stream diversion permits in East Maui that they worked so out they with were, the I mean, So people have sort of, whether they wanted that to happen yeah. or not, have associated them with another bill that yeah. may not. Some have even right. suggested, boy, maybe Airbnb would go with the REIT bill if in exchange they could get the water permit bill. Well, it didn't turn out that way. A and B is 0 for 2 in that regard. Yeah, they are. They, well, this is not a very good session for A and B. <laughs> well, you know, I, we are, if we have time, we ought to talk about that. Because I think that they actually won on the water bill. Oh, on the water issue. bill. Okay. Yeah, on the water bill issue. They, they took it in the seat on this one. 
Well, this would normally be, in my, with my experience, the kind of bill that you wouldn't go out to the public with. This right. is a definitely insider bill. I mean, I would have had my lobbyists coming in there along with the people from the state retirement system showing that their investments would be losing money. The REITs money. bill. Right, yeah, right. On the, this is the REITs well, bill. I, I agree with you, and I can only figure I, that they... That they door just was not up. open to them, and so this is their Hail Mary pass. Yeah, to I go think to this, is, uh, this is what you do for you know, people who want to uh, you know, get, get some kind of work done. Well, there's another thing to keep in mind, the fact that the national REITs representation, I don't know what the, the HUI, the organization, is called, but it spent a considerable mm -hmm. amount of money lobbying against it. Remember, it's often as there's a trend in states, as one state goes, so goes another. And that's what they're really worried that about. That is the concern that, that this mean, is going to spread nationwide. It, you know, it seemed to me that one of the questions the governor will be asked to believe is that if this bill passed, it would actually make a difference right. for and investments. And, you know, if people are only investing because of the tax, there's something's wrong with the investment in the and we're also talking about a 6.4% tax. I mean, I, I think it's hardly ruinous um, yeah. for, for the REITs. It would be for my salary. But yeah. Yeah. Nice <laughs> okay, guys, so uh, let's, uh, let's talk. What else is interesting? What else is interesting that the governor may, uh, may elect to do or not do? Mm -hmm. What about the, uh, let's go fun. Let's get some fun. Let's do some social stuff. Uh, what about decriminalizing marijuana? No, I thought marijuana? you were going to go there. I thought you were going to go yeah. there. Well, the bill that passed would allow possession of about three grams mm -hmm. of marijuana. And if um, I could, when I was in college, if I could afford three grams, it would have been. <laughs> <laughs> well, the sad truth is that there are people that are going to jail because right. they have maybe a couple of joints, and we don't need to put more people at O Triple C or the other correctional facilities. We're Frankly, yeah, up. where yeah. we actually have them. Big problem. Correct. There would yeah. also be, uh, if I understand correctly from the legislation, expungement uh, of the record, right. a clearing of your record should this pass. And I was surprised, we were actually talking before we came on today, that it made it out. I mean, remember, recreational marijuana was the big bill. They were talking about, at the beginning, complete legalization, although not for you know, young people, it would be certainly 18 right, or 21 right, and right. above. But I'm surprised that it made out. Uh, Although some prominent people were backing that bill, at least publicly, whatever yeah. they thought. But it died in the stores. Senate. Yeah. Roz Baker simply didn't want to pass it, was much more focused, her health committee, on medical marijuana mm -hmm. and improving that law that's already well, in the books. You know, but it, Governor, I will tell you this, uh, Governor Ige has a number of times, and he has said publicly he's never smoked marijuana. I do think that makes a difference. I think you know, that's probably true. It does. <laughs> if you, swim, well, if you well, tried well, it, you know. You know <laughs> I came from the I didn't hail generation. You know? I didn't I mean, inhale. Well, President Obama famously <laughs> said, I did inhale. That was the point. Yeah. <laughs> but the governor has said as recently as when the bill passed out of the legislature uh, the first week of May, or last week of April, first week of May, he was asked about it. What are you going to do? And, of course, he didn't want to show his cards, but he did say what he has always said. Marijuana is illegal at the federal level. It is a Schedule One drug, along with I think heroin, mm -hmm. cocaine, and, and he's concerned about that as well as some transportation issues. Well, yeah, and um, you know what? We're going to take a quick break. Um, when we come back, um, you know, it just seemed, in my opinion, though, that the uh, decriminalization bill was kind of a neat little compromise. Sure. You know, it, 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 this is a way to show that you're liberal. I mean, but the, not go all the way, yeah. you know, and, and and I guess that's the art of legislation, you know, getting half pregnant. But anyway, <laughs> we'll be right back. Aloha. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea is on Think Tech Hawaii every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join me where my guests talk about law topics and ideas and music and Hawaiiana all across the sea from Hawaii and back again. Aloha. <laughs> Aloha, this is Winston Welch. I am your host of Out and About, where every other week, 
Mondays at 3, we explore a variety of topics in our city, state, nation, and world, and uh, events, organizations, the people that fuel them. It's a really interesting show. We welcome you to tune in, and we welcome your suggestions for shows. Um, you got a lot of them out there, and we have an awesome uh, studio here where we can get your ideas out as well. So I look forward to you tuning in every other week where we've got some great guests and great topics. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to come away inspired like I do. So I'll see you every other week here at 3 o'clock on Monday afternoon. Aloha. Welcome back to Talk Story with John Waihe'e, and today we are talking about whether or not the governor will veto some key pieces of legislation that just passed from the recently held 2009 legislative session. The last bill we were discussing was the uh, bill that would decriminalize a three grams, I guess, right. of mm -hmm. marijuana, sort of a half-pregnant uh, decision that was done by the legislature in order not to decide whether or not they would like to legalize adult marijuana. You know, but what is interesting about the decriminalization is I have been actually had a series of conversations with uh, Governor Jay mm -hmm. Hinesley from uh, Washington, Washington State. State, where they 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 legalized adult use and. And myself, and in the and he's actually working on some legislation. And what we were discussing is our guilty consciences. Mm -hmm. Was discussing our guilty consciences, which were, which occurs because we deeply regret that we had a hand somewhere along in our career of putting young people in particular, but people in general, in jail mm -hmm. for smoking or uh, uh, for using. A uh, cannabis, mm -hmm. uh, which today in many parts of this country uh, is available for recreational use. In fact, the entire West Coast, we're the only state that hasn't legalized it. Yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, in his case, we, we actually sat down and worked through some of the points that you would want to put in any legislation that would pardon people mm -hmm. already in jail. Uh, what a waste of human potential. But then again, you know, the difficulty was that the, um, after you put somebody in for 10 years, they may not be the same person mm. that they yeah. were some innocent young person in, in the past. But anyway, you know, I, I think there's a lot of social emotion in, in this entire I think issue. that's right. In fact, this is, this is one of these interesting bills. I mean, I was, I was talking to Chad about this earlier. I got a lot of calls from mainland reporters who just assumed that, of course, Hawaii is going to legalize marijuana. And I think... Partially, it's a misunderstanding of the, the political culture here, which is it's a much more conservative place than some people yes. some yes. people realize, and also a generational divide. This this was the bill my students were really furious about, and it's well, not just because they wanted to smoke marijuana. To them, it just reflects an out of touch legislature or an out of touch era. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and uh, um, yeah, this is a young people's bill, and it's not necessarily as you say because they want to do it. But because it it uh, it actually shows the hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. but you know, Governor, it's not just young people that smoke marijuana. In well, fact, see, that's, a, the, that's yeah. it crosses the generations. And I think, in addition to the "don't put them in jail," that doesn't make any sense. The other very strong argument, which is not attached to the decrim bill, but would be if we uh, recreationalize or legalize. Is the revenue picture, and that is what has motivated states like Inslee is Washington State, right? right? right. And, and Colorado uh, and Oregon is the money that can come in into state coffers, in some cases dedicated uh, for a particular fund. Mm -hmm. I think in Colorado it goes to education, maybe some other purposes. And at some point, particularly a state with such a huge unfunded liability, it must be $20 billion oh, or more, yeah. retirement and health benefits for our state and county workers, you're going to look at that and say, well, not only that, you're going to say, 
who has the best marijuana in the United States? We still have this branding <laughs> thing. Well, we, Hawaii's got a great, great well, marketing. That's, that's, you know, I mean, this, yeah. is, this is something that I know the folks who are working on marijuana here are very yeah. concerned about. They want Hawaii to be thought of as the, the Napa Valley of, of yeah, America. Well, they, they want, is, they want <laughs> the same kind yeah. of protection code of coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Pokey. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. You know, people <laughs> watching around saying, you can't say, what is it, Kona Go, Maui Waui. Yeah, you know? yeah. But, you know, what's in, interesting about all of that is that the medical marijuana industry is not necessarily booming with cash mm -hmm. or paying a real revenue back into the state. Well, it's taken a long time for that to come online. And remember, we were one of the first states to move towards medical marijuana, but not dispensaries. It was yeah. only until what, right. a year right. or right. so. 1995. I think, January, I think it wasn't until January of this, this year, year that the Department of Health finally started opening the dispensaries. And by the way, it wasn't all at once, right. one at a time. In and, fact, there are some yeah. licensees that are still not... Uh, that could well as be. I, as I, I, thought, I thought by now most of them had, and, and of course they're limited, by state law to how many you can have in each county. Well, so. I tell you what, though, the, the, you know, okay, what do you think? He's going to sign, veto, or uh, let it go to law? Is he going to treat this like you do abortion? I'm going to say he's going to let it go. He's going to let it go. He's not going to sign it. He's not going to sign it, but he's not, not going to veto, veto it. it. Not a bad thought the more I think about it, because then he doesn't have any responsibility for it. I still lean to that he will, he will veto it just because it conflicts with federal law. Having said that, you haven't seen the Department of Justice, even under this administration, cracking down on the states that are allowing well, this to Well, you know, it's really forward. interesting, but the political, the politics of this issue is, is, is interesting because it's one of the few issues where you have the ultra-right and the ultra-left That's agreeing. Right. Mm. That's right. You know, That's and right. it's the guys in the middle who want to keep pretending that America is still in the middle that sort of oppose this stuff. And, and not really, not in the private conversations. You no, know, no, but the people that have opposed it the most publicly, the people that are justifying, it's law enforcement. Mm -hmm. It's the, the prosecutors, it's the county police departments. They're the ones that have been most uh, vocal in saying, don't do it because it's a gateway. A gateway in the sense that, oh, if you decriminalize, then the next thing is recreation. Well, that's, that's what I, I told Judge Moon, you know, and I said, you know, it's sort of interesting because one of the biggest gateway toward um, drug usage is cigarette. <laughs> it's true. You yeah. know, and uh, liquor, yeah. everything else. But, you know, I guess... Can't get those back in the bottle. No, so. no, yeah, you know, so how many, uh, well, how many gateways you, you do you know, need? since we're on the topic of marijuana, one bill that hasn't got as much attention that I wanted to bring up, um, but it's been talked about for a long time, is this industrial hemp bill. Yeah. Which is it's related yeah. and actually now is going to be much more important than I right. think was originally thought years ago when this has been kicking around, because now there's this this fad of CBD oil that can treat oh, everything from baldness to It's like to marijuana cancer. light. Yeah. You know, it's <laughs> marijuana light. So everybody's buying right. CBD. CBD. I, I do this. Uh, I take these health supplements, you know, and it was sort of interesting because they wanted me to eat kale sure. and do everything else. in the. <laughs> now their number one product that you can buy online. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, and have mailed to you is a CBD mm -hmm. uh, cart, you know, bottle. And I'm thinking, this is ridiculous, you know. And people are going out and buying it because it's legal, it's safe, it's mm -hmm. as close to marijuana as you're going to get. And there's it is a kind of hypocrisy over the whole thing. But, you know, Hawaii politics on these social issues is very interesting because it, the church, the religious right in Hawaii is vocal and, and, and strong, but they always thought of lose mm -hmm. on the big issues, you know, whether it's the choice issue, it's same-sex same marriage, same sex marriage yeah. all of these things. So if you're a politician, what do you have left to give it to mm -hmm. the troops that are, uh, you know, in that, with that inclination that support you? Well, you mentioned abortion rights, and there's something that we didn't expect, the actual possibility that Roe versus Wade mm -hmm. Could, could be overturned, overturned. Uh, what is happening in Alabama and the southern states in particular, and you're seeing a real trend. No one ever thought Roe versus Wade would be touched. I, but, well, you know, in Hawaii, the last two issues would be commercial gaming 
And recreational marijuana. Yeah, the, 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 the physician-assisted suicide or it's death gone. of dignity yeah. was one of the last gone. ones. Gone, you know, yeah. and you got these two, and it's going to be a, a bet which one eventually uh, happens. So, so to speak. I, <laughs> I, think, I think the bet, you, you would lose if you bet wrong. <laughs> and and it would probably be recreational. Anyway, let's keep going. What do we got else? What else have we got uh, this in? Probably the, the, the most controversial, I would say, mm -hmm. Bill, on the governor's desk is the one that barely made it out of the state Senate. It was one vote. In fact, they deadlocked at 12-12. Kurt Favela had to go to the hospital on the last day of conference committee, and then they ultimately, uh, some back and forth went on. And I'm talking about the Airbnb bill. Oh, Even yes. though it's not Airbnb per se, but it is. It's short-term vacation rentals, mm -hmm. Expedia, other companies. And this would uh, permit these organizations to act as tax brokers, collectors, and get that GET, the general excise tax, and the TAT, the transient accommodations tax, and get that money from these people that are renting these places anyway. About $46 million is what Senator Donovan De La Cruz, chair of the WAN so committee. So we'll be taxing illegal activity. Laura Thielen and Gil yes. Rubier, two, <laughs> state, two state senators with districts with a lot of these, uh, these units, uh, the North Shore and Kailua and Tawaimanalo and so forth. Uh, Elon essentially said, look, if you pass this bill, SB 1292, I think, uh, maybe it's an HB, you're going to be legalizing an illegal activity. Governor Ige himself vetoed similar legislation just a couple years ago. Right. And the concern is, well, you're just going to open the door. There's no enforcement provision in this. Zoning and enforcement is at the county levels, not at the state level. I think a lot's going to depend on what happens even as we're speaking right now with the Honolulu City Council. Mm -hmm. Bill 85, what do they do? But particularly Bill 89, which is the more omnibus bill. And it, it, it allows some units, not others. Uh, and it seems to be a compromise bill. This is interesting. The short-term vacation rental businesses, the, the national organizations, they're against Bill 89 at the city level, but they're for the state bill that i think kind of shows you where they stand we're, we're, it, what they find acceptable exactly right. just don't make us illegal it, yeah it, it also has created some interesting political partners like the the hotel industry and local five are together <laughs> um, in opposing this bill which yeah. usually they don't get along so well but local well, but, five, but, you know it, the, the uh, industry is, is probably correct i yeah. mean what they, what they would like is for people to go and use the traditional lodging facilities. Not and, and it's at those lodgings that Hotel 5 has a lot of its workers. Exactly. The primary exactly. union that, that employs those folks. It, this kind of resembles the, the sort of the arguments about the um, about Uber and uh, Lyft mm -hmm. and the rest of these, you know, where you have an established industry and you technology has made it possible for a, something else to evolve unregulated. But it's not just technology, it's bottom line, it's That's dollars. Right. It's, it's a lot cheaper it's, it's, to get a and b, &B or a short-term vacation rental, just like it's cheaper to catch an Uber and a Lyft. Have you gone and rented a taxi uh, recently? No yeah. offense to the taxi companies, but no, no the surprise price. that they're, they're uh, upset with Uber and Lyft coming in. So it's a new business model. And, and, and you know, Civil B had an, an editorial, I believe, where you talked about how Hawaii was addicted to Airbnb. And there's a lot of truth to that. I mean, most of the growth in tourism from 8 million to 10 million, we haven't had significant new hotel construction. No. So a lot of that, or nearly all of it, is from Airbnb. So there's a lot of people making money, including Hawaiian Airlines and the airline industry. Well, see, that's this. it. That's it. There's a lot of people making money off of it. But the real impact of it in politically is in the neighborhoods where you have these huge right. houses. Mm -hmm. I, I was uh, visiting a very sick friend of mine and who was bedridden, and we looked across the street, and his wife was telling me, you know, that house has 26 bedrooms. Mm -hmm. I think, who would not? You know, come on. Yeah. I mean... 26 bedrooms? You sure it wasn't a monster home? Well, it was a huge place, you know, but you know, you know what that, and, and, and the only reason why they're bedrooms is because they got hot, uh, what do you call it, hot pad, hot prop pad. plates, yeah. yeah, hot plates. Instead and of this stones. is why senators like Thielen from Kailua are getting so much pressure on this bill. In fact, this was motivated the, the most recent kind of crazy proposal for Kailua to, uh, to secede from the city and county of Honolulu and create its own county. This well, is how you know they want to do are. that in Molokai, yeah. and it actually picked up some steam.
We're going to be right back after this word from our friend. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. I interview guests who are successful in business, sports, and life, which is sure to inspire you in finding your greatness. Join me every Monday as we go Beyond the Lines at 11 a.m. Aloha. <laughs> Aloha, I'm Dennis Wong, a host here at Think Tech Hawaii, a digital media company serving the people of Hawaii. We provide a video platform for citizen journalists to raise public awareness in Hawaii. We are a Hawaii nonprofit that depends on the generosity of its supporters to keep on going. We'd be grateful if you'd go to thinktechhawaii.com and make a donation to support us now. Thanks so much. Welcome back to Talk Story with John Waihe'e. For those of you listening out there and those of you joining us, the number to call is 808-374-2014. We would be delighted to take your questions. We were just discussing the new proposal to tax Airbnbs in, in Hawaii. What do you think? Uh, is the governor going to sign it, veto it, or just let it become law? I think he's going to veto it, and partly because he vetoed a similar bill uh, earlier and because some of the financial pressure is off. I mean, one of the reasons Senator Dela Cruz pushed this through the legislature is because it was going to fill this hole. But tax collections are up a bit, and so there's not the kind of urgency to get it passed this year. I agree. Uh, again, it's tempting. That's a lot of money. If we were in a more dire situation financially, I think you would do it. But again, I will say it a lot depends on what the city council does mm -hmm. with Bill 89, which we'll know uh, sometime later this evening. But I'm guessing, along with Colin, that he's probably going to veto it. You know, it's, it's interesting that nobody's starting to make the argument that uh, in the United States, in the, United, the United States Congress, way years in the past when they wanted to get rid of a particular habit, they tax it out of existence. <laughs> so you could get rid of some of this by making them a whole lot more expensive than the hotel. Well, with Bill 89, the penalties that would be incurred for people that don't mm -hmm. pay, it's something like $1,000 a day, then it jumps up to 5000 I think on Maui, they pass something where oh, it's, it's even huge. even higher. That's a pretty good incentive to pay your mm -hmm. bill uh, when it's just racking up those funds. Or, you know, and, and, or you go keep out of raise the taxes and eventually this will happen. I think, could auction off the permits or something I like that. I think he's yeah. going to let this one go without oh, his signature. Okay, that's good. Okay. That's good to know. Yeah, but, that, but don't take that as I, uh, right. any kind of indication. I just, it's a gut feeling I have. You're, you know? you're a former governor. Yeah. <laughs> I think it kind of carries yeah, some weight. I think you know. it does. And you know, the hotel <laughs> industry, if he does let this go, is going to be particularly angry because uh, the other bill yeah. is about uh, taxing resort fees, which has been their way around yeah. uh, raising right. a bit more money revenue, uh, yeah. more money recently. And I think we he will let that, that go. And you know, I, I just think he's going to say, you know, I don't like it, but if the legislature, this is their stuff, you know, all the rest of that stuff. Mm -hmm. But really, what he's doing is he's forcing the issue back up. Anyway, uh, where are we now? You got the... Uh... There were two bills that uh, surprised me that made it through. Uh, one of them is automatic recounts in close elections. And of course, this was driven by the Trevor Ozawa, uh, Tommy Waters race, but also Matt Lepresti and Kurt mm -hmm. Favela, even yeah, though that right. one didn't get another chance to hear from the voters. It is amazing that we have not had an automatic recount procedure on our books until now. I don't have the exact figure, but it's a pretty small percentage. Within a hundred votes, I which think is would, the in trigger, fact, yeah. would have applied to Trevor mm -hmm. Ozawa and, and Tommy Waters. And we know how that turned out. I don't think there's, I think, I can't see why the governor uh, wouldn't uh, pass I would, this. Yeah, yeah, I think this yeah. is definitely a signature. It's just a no brainer. People, uh, when I was in office, I, I <laughs> was faced with a situation with an election that actually ended up in a tie. Oh. <laughs> This was uh, Gene Albano running against, um, oh, what is her name, Connie Chung oh. in Kalihi. And this was when you were in charge as LG Well, of no, no, I was, uh, I was uh, you know, the law says that in that situation, I sort of take control because oh. 
I get to, they, you know what the solution is. Is it flipping a coin? Flip a coin. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. The that's law says you got to flip, flip a, a coin. coin. All right. So we got to the, you know, these guys came in and, but uh, one of the, one of the candidates says, I'm not going to flip a coin. I'm not going to flip a coin. What are you going to do? And there is no provision for somebody saying, I'm not going to participate. So we ended up saying, well, uh, if you don't flip a coin, it falls to the governor. That's how I got it. So I then decided that I'm going to appoint the winner of the new special election. Uh -huh. And now, lucky for me, Kalihi only had a Democratic primary. There was no general. Mm. So we could run it again, <laughs> you know. But yeah, I don't see the governor doing yeah. anything. But it is a good thing to have on the book. I think a lot of people were surprised that we did it when this came yeah, up. The, the more Zala significant Waters. bill is the vote by mm -hmm. mail. Uh, we were looking at a pilot program just for Kauai County only in the 2020 election. This would be an absentee ballot mailed to right. every single home, and, and you would vote. And then the, there would be a study sent back to the legislature saying, well, how did it turn out? Well, instead, the legislature moved to implement that statewide for next year's election. And by the way, we should make clear, if you're the old-fashioned kind and you still want to walk into a voting booth, there will still be places You can still go available. to very But it's not going to be that. every precinct in the state like it used to be. And it's going to save money, according to uh, the people that run the elections here. And, fingers crossed, we hope that it's going to improve turnout. We'll see. I think the governor is going to sign that bill. Oh, I, I'm willing to... Bet he will. <laughs> I think he will, too. I don't see any reason. Well, it's also kind of his philosophy. Yeah. I mean, he's a conservative guy and all of that. But uh, I don't know. What do you think? Um, do you think it will actually have an impact on our voter participation? Does it actually matter? Does One of the bills it... that did not make it out of session was automatic voter yeah. registration. Right. Something that has shown to actually have an impact improving turnout in a lot of places and did not make the cut. I think it's a combination of things. Even Scott Nago, the elections, chief elections officer, said, look, it's not our job to get people to vote. Our job is to make it as easy as possible for people to vote. It's already pretty easy. Now having it come in your mailbox, I mean, think about it. You don't have to get off from work. You can actually sit in front of the computer, talk it over with your family members. I think that will serve as an incentive. You That's, can also, there yeah. can be a, you know, you can, as a Somebody running the political uh, political campaign. There's also a whole lot of oh, new tricks yeah. so, you can do. So, I mean, so first I should say that a lot of the Speaking studies, of Kali, uh, <laughs> right? <laughs> a lot of the studies done on vote by mail show it shows it has a little bit of an effect. It's not a huge effect. Yeah. Um, you know, they they had vote by mail in Oregon for a long time, so it might help a little bit. Yeah. It's not gonna, mainly what it does is it makes people who already vote. It just makes them. A, it easier for them. Well, to do. Oregon already had an 80 or 90 yeah. percent turnout rate. We're, we're like at 50 percent, depending on how you evaluate it, more like 30, whether or not it's We used to voters. have these yeah. really high numbers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but then again, you know, we changed the, uh, the way that you calculate the figures, you know, because we used to only do the percentages against registered voters. Mm -hmm. Now we do it against eligible voters. voters. And so you really got two percentages going there. You well, got, with eligible voters, we're last. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we really Minnesota, done. I think, is the it's, number it's one It's always state. number one, yeah. 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 You know, but Although, I, interesting, Kauai is always the star of, of, of this state, and that's where they're going to roll this yeah. out first, or they were. Well, well, now it's statewide. Yeah. So. The, the real question, which the, I don't know if politicians thought it through at all, and maybe you can pass these types of things, but if I, when I was in the legislature, the big discussion, Behind the behind the scenes discussion would have been, do you think I could win with this mm -hmm. system? I don't think that. I have I don't no think, doubt that I, that discussion I, went on this time <laughs> around too, Governor. No doubt at all. Am I going to be hurt running for re-election? Right. If, if anybody can, if if well, they can that's vote that's from what home. happens. Yeah. You know, I mean, we used to have multiple member districts right. that got changed, and everybody said there was you know horrendous things would happen. And it, they did, but nobody wants to change the system. Sure, sure. We wiped out the Republican Party, essentially. And nobody wants, and it was, uh, nobody wants to change the system. We had uh, this, the, the open, we used to have closed primaries where you had to be a member of the political party to vote mm -hmm. in the primary election, or you used to have to, uh, you know, at least declare your membership. Mm -hmm. Now it's a different kind of primary. 
any change, people will find, will be uncomfortable. It's, Although it's, I would mention the primary, this is my personal gripe. Even though it's technically an open primary, it's not really. you can only vote for one party. You can't say, I want a Democrat in this seat, and I want a Republican or a Libertarian. Yeah, and, and let me tell you. Unlike the general election, you can do that. Well, let me tell you, well, and you, have, you should be able to do that. Mm -hmm. that. That's the idea of a general election. But the reason why that is like that is because that's a compromise again. You know, way back, we used to, the, the, uh, this is the 1978 Constitutional Convention. And a little bit of history. And the sponsor of the, what is the, uh, the open primary was Bill Beatty. Mm -hmm. Really? And he was like, yeah, he was a Republican who liked Democrats. So he wanted to be able to vote for the best oh. Democrat in, uh, in the elections that you he was You appointed him to DLNR, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, he was my campaign manager. Yeah. And he, I was in the Constitutional Convention. So he actually pushed for this uh, open, the primary. Uh -huh. But the effect of having... But he had to be checked. Okay, well, that, by a number of us real Democrats. <laughs> it may have been, but in reality, the primary has become the defining, the essential election. The general election is almost a wash well, in most Hawaii, races. Yes. It is the primary. And remember, since that time, a lot of races have gone nonpartisan county council, county mayor, county as a, prosecutor. As a reaction to that. Right. As a reaction mm -hmm. to yeah. that, so that, you know, somebody can actually legitimately run for mayor and, and be. You know, traditionally a Republican, you couldn't do that, really. Um, back uh, it, in, in when we used to have partisan elections, right. but the compromise was okay. Bill, we go, you, they can vote. Everybody can vote no. in anybody's election. Not you don't have to show your car, party it's, card, so to speak. But you got to choose at the booth. one or the other. Yeah. It's interesting this session how many bills experimenting with different ways of running elections uh, were considered. I mean, there was, there was the uh, rank order voting system. There right. was the California-style jungle primary. That's that right. is a bill. All sorts of things that I don't think you I saw get a more lot of attention. Uh, voter reform mm -hmm. bills that I had seen in That's any... That's because nobody thinks they're going to lose their election. <laughs> they know. No, I'm serious. Yeah. If people really, if you really wanted intense discussions on this, which is, by the way, a good time, or, you know, this is a good time for good government uh, mm -hmm. organizations to get involved because the legislature, there's no fear. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you make a change that actually starts to make mm -hmm. real change, mm -hmm. then you're going to see a whole mm -hmm. different kind of I get of the legislature intensity. credit for moving forward in, well, I in do this too. regard. I do too. Okay, guys, we're going we're gonna to have great elections. One thing we know is that when we had a lieutenant governor, he would have believed that every day he should make more people vote because that's how he gets elected governor. You know? <laughs> one but when you have a professional, yeah. you have a professional running elections, he can say something like yeah. Mr. Nago, which is, it's not my job. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, all right. Okay. We, 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 I want to go to prison. Yeah. Let's go to prison, you know, and... Um, what, so the legislature, in its wisdom, came up with what? Well, this was another uh, surprise at the legislature because criminal justice reform generally has not gone very far. Remember Justice Reinvention Initiative? I mean, there were some things that happened, but we all know our prisons and our jails are in a serious, serious condition. Dilapidated. Mm -hmm. We send hundreds of prisoners to Arizona. We hire a private prison company to house them there. We've got overcrowding. Look at the riots that happened right. at the Maui really? the Triple C facility. Um, oh, Triple C is falling apart. We need to rebuild that. Although there's an argument about whether we need to be building, building more jails and, and prisons. But what came out, I think three measures, but one in particular is an oversight commission, an independent commission to oversee the eight prisons, uh, the eight jails, uh, sorry, I always get that wrong. It's four jails and four prisons, eight facilities total, that is run by the Department of Public Safety. They're all state controlled. And the, the hope is that is going to really make a, a lot of headway in terms of improving our criminal justice system. Let's, let's come back and talk more about this. We're going to take another break at this time. So here we are. We'll be join us in about one minute. Aloha, I'm Yukari Kunisue the host of Konnichiwa Hawaii, Japanese talk show on ThinkTech Hawaii. Konnichiwa Hawaii is all Japanese broadcast show. 
and is streamed live on ThinkTech at 2 p.m. every other Monday. Thank you so much for watching our show. We look forward to seeing you then. I'm Yukari Kunise. Mahalo. <laughs> Aloha, I'm Stan Osterman, a host here on ThinkTech Hawaii, a digital media company serving the people of Hawaii. We provide a video platform for citizen journalists to raise public awareness here on the island. We are a Hawaii nonprofit that depends on the generosity of its supporters to keep on going. We'd be grateful if you go to thinktechhawaii.com and make a donation to support us now. Mahalo. Welcome back to the last segment of today's very interesting show where we are discussing the possible actions that Governor Ige may take with regard to legislation that was passed by the recently held uh, legislative session. Question would be whether he is going to veto them, sign it, or even uh, let it become law without his signature. So let's get to the prisons. We're just on there. And there's this oversight commission. What does the commission do that isn't being done now? Well, it doesn't exist. Yeah, well, so it, it would create it, and there would be a coordinator that would be in charge. There's currently a, a reentry commission uh, that would be folded into it. It would have some appropriations, and it would have direct oversight um, of the Department of Public Safety, which runs uh, the prisons and jails. So what, what does that mean when we say oversight? You know, what does that well, mean? Well, I can tell you that it's a very long and detailed bill, but its recommendations came from a task force of some very well-respected people, including Supreme Court justices and prosecuting attorneys and people that are hoping to reform the system, and it had near universal acclaim. Often a task force study or any study will go to the legislature and they may or may not act on it. There were actually two task force that came forward this time. And another recommendation that's going to this, uh, going along with this is unsecured that's bail. Right. Too many people cannot afford bail. Unsecured even bail. Even though for an un, uh, a non-violent crime, they just don't have the, the well, money. Most yeah. of the people that are in the jail, oh, I would, I, I'm gonna just go out on a limb and yeah. say, at least 50% uh, of the people in the jail, more likely more, are, are people who haven't been convicted of a crime. They're waiting to, for court date, and yet they're sleeping three or four people to a cell, including someone's got their head down by the toilet in, in the Maui Triple uh, C so facility. So this, this, that the bill that we, was the second bill that you just talked yeah. about, would allow the judge to release Has the discretion them? to say, mm -hmm. you're fine. I mean, you're, you know, they don't expect you to be able to get on an airplane and leave. And there will be concerns about people that might, in fact, flaunt that and, and do something uh, yeah, but, to, but, to escape you know, justice. But, uh, let, you know, let's, let's, but most people just don't have, we're talking hundreds and hundreds of dollars, sometimes higher to post bail. Most people don't have that kind of spare ex change. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, and what would the system, what would it matter if for a lot of these minor crimes, if they did catch a plane and leave? Well, I, think, know, I mean, that'll save us all a lot of money. <laughs> you know, line up get 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 out of here. <laughs> you know and, and we're not the first to do this. I mean, I mean, the biggest player who, who's moved to unsecured bail is California, right. but there's a lot of other state and local jurisdictions that have started this and I don't I haven't really heard of any major consequences I mean adverse you know consequences what's, you know in, what's in, in interesting because I often thought about this and and that is that our both the United States Constitution and the state Constitution uh, says that you cannot be jailed for debt mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and yet when it comes to taxes and when it comes to bail you stay in jail yeah you know, for, for the non-payment of a debt. For, for days and longer. Yeah. Uh, and the statistics back that up. There was another bill. This was on asset forfeiture. Mm -hmm. That's where the authorities can seize, uh, even without you being charged with a crime, right. yeah. uh, cars, uh, other things that were used possibly in the commission of a crime. And then you never see that again. The average citizen who loses even their home that then could be auctioned off by the state or the counties, and the money then goes into... And you never have to be guilty of the crime. No, you never have to be guilty. That's another bill that is on the governor's desk, uh, asset forfeiture. Now, if you're in, accused of or involved in a felony, that's a different story. But for nonviolent crimes, the idea is that why are we taking your stuff? You know, again, these bills hit the borderline because that, to the normal American, Hawaiian citizen 
in, uh, or Hawaii citizen in the state of Hawaii, if I told you that the government can just step in there and grab your property because you had a little chicken fight in your backyard, <laughs> I mean, would you even can believe it? And by the way, that's the, this is not the first time the forfeiture bill came up. No, but it is, it is uh, on the governor's desk. There's even one more, if I just may. It's hard to believe this didn't actually exist, but there is a bill that would require the reporting mm -hmm. of the deaths of inmates who work in incarceration facilities, uh, as well as the people that work there. Can you believe that that's not already yeah. on the books right now? Why Why you need a bill to do that? That should be I, automatic. I think there was personnel issues that were concerned. Remember the folks that are employed, the ACOs and others work for unions. Right. Uh, UPW, I think, is probably the, the major union for the prisons. And, um, and I, th there was a concern about just you know, personal violations, letting a, a name get out there. But in fact, it seems to have uh, tied up folks being notified, family members and friends, that somebody had died. And, and, and you know, this group of bills, I mean, because sometimes we talk about yeah. how national trends relate to, to us here. This has been a national trend. It has. Criminal justice reform and prison reform, this is one of the few issues where the right and the left sometimes agree, and particularly the issue of asset forfeiture. You get the hard right conservative libertarians and the liberals agreeing on this particular issue. And what, what is their agreement? Their agreement is it's a terrible Don't idea. Don't touch my right. stuff. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Off, government. Absolutely. You know, it, literally, dude, I remember I was uh, uh, a young legislator sitting at the uh, state, uh, you know, in the judiciary meeting, and Chuck Moslin came by. He was a prosecutor back then, and he wanted this bill so he could grab Campbell Estates land that was being leased to uh, people who formerly worked for Wailua Plantation mm. oh. who were having chicken fights in their backyard <laughs> because that was, in his mind, organized, uh -huh. an organized crime activity. And it got turned down. This time, the legislator passes. So real quick, commission. Yes, no, sign, don't sign. I think it would be, I think the governor will do it for a couple of reasons. It was supported by the public safety chairs who were part of the commission, Greg Takayama, one of the governor's mm -hmm. closest friends in the House. And frankly, the governor wants to move towards uh, getting a new OCCC bill. That is something that's been moving slowly. I will just add real quickly, the task force itself do not say that more incarceration is the way to go. That is not the way to reform our system. No, I hope But for not. now, there's a, a simple recognition that we can't just keep people uh, uh, in Arizona, as well as three or four people to a cell. My guess is he'll sign it. He's going to sign all of them. All I, of them. I, so I, you're going to go I'll... real quick. There's yep. all of them. The bail one. He'll, he'll probably sign. have a big ceremony, and 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 Clarence Ishihara and what about the forfeiture bill? I am. I think it's a no-brainer. Um, I will tell you that it, it has been opposed, as you can guess, from some law enforcement agencies. But it is a civil liberties issue, and as you mentioned, it's politically appealing on both sides. Of the political spectrum. So what, what does the forfeiture bill do? We didn't really You know what? I'm actually going to just read real quickly what it does. It, uh, unless the covered offense is a felony for which the property owner has been convicted, uh, you can't do it. You cannot seize mm -hmm. this property. Uh, there are some exceptions here and there, uh, but it, it's, a, it's a civil right. And it makes oh, a well, certain so. amount of common sense. Because yeah. so by the way, when that stuff is auctioned, that money doesn't go back to the person who owned it. It no. goes to the government. Well, it also and goes... a specific part of the government. Correct. <laughs> That's why and the law also, enforcement agency is in favor. To, it goes to a black box. Yeah. Because the, uh, the, you know, none of the traditional mm -hmm. methods of oversight apply to this money. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, go confiscate a, like a, a, a Corvette from the a local new drug form dealer of tax and then, you know, you got a Corvette, yeah. you know? <laughs> okay, guys, so um, anything else that we got? Because I tell you what, the governor did sign a bunch of bills, and it looked more like all the spending bills. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, there's nothing terribly controversial. There was a bill regulating midwives, uh, with an exception for Native Hawaiian practitioners, that was one of the few bills. Remember, about 300 bills make it out of a ledge. About 3,000 are introduced. Right now, 100 of those 300 have become law. So the governor is looking at 200. And of those, I'm looking at maybe two dozen that are probably controversial. Yeah, probably yeah. controversial. Yeah, like that's collective probably bargaining. Right. Collective bargaining, what a surprise. That's right. going to go right through right. all those bills. Well, I'll tell you one thing, though. Usually, the, see, the money bills, for a governor, the money bills, especially if they're Clever. 
money bills are the easiest to handle because mm -hmm. you got three ways to deal with them. I mean, you can either veto the entire bill or sign it, or you can you can uh, do a line item veto mm -hmm. on bills and change the amounts of, that have been done. Or you can just sign the thing and never release the money. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there's no, you know, there's so much. Yeah, that or release you can it at do. your leisure. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> or, you know, or make somebody behave well before you release it. Really, yeah. I, I don't know. I'm sure the governor's never done that. You know, <laughs> I won't say that past governors haven't done that, but David Inge strikes me as the kind of guy that doesn't. No, doesn't he's make much deals. more straightforward. Yeah, yeah. He, he just seems, um, he calls it like he sees it and he doesn't. That's. Who knows? If there is another side of David Eagy that I don't know, that would be a surprise. I've never seen him really play politics with legislation in that regard. I can hear people now out there in the world no, laughing and yelling, 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 in at any at the end of any, any session, have to do with technical mistake. Yep, mm -hmm. that's right. Technical is somebody forgot to do something in the rush of legislation, and the governor will get back a memo from the attorney general's office or budget and finance or an yep. agency and say, "Look, if you do this, this other program mm -hmm. is going to be affected. You needed to write one more sentence in yeah. here," and it, it's. Um, so there's going to be a lot of vetoes of that nature. Now, one thing that the legislature has never done, never done, and I had actually suggested to them that they should do this when Linda Lingle was governor, you know, as, you know, as, a, as, a, good Democrat. as a partisan gesture, because <laughs> as a governor, I would never do this. But I would never encourage what? this. Is that the, 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 uh, the Constitution allows the legislature to, in one day's time, with one reading, amend a bill that the governor puts into, the, into any category. Mm -hmm. So I can go in and I can amend the, uh, the legislature. It doesn't have to override a veto. Right. They actually have an, an, a second option, mm -hmm. which is that they will amend the bill to conform with his message. Now, the, the difference between that and the normal bill process is that if he vetoes it then. Mm -hmm. it, it just, there's no override. Mm -hmm. so, but you can amend it, and we could clean up a whole bunch of legislation mm -hmm. uh, if they would come back uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and do that. Because, and, and the tricky part, the political part, this is a little lesson in politics for some of these guys out there. The, the political part of doing all of this is that you can, a lot of times, governors, I'm sure this particular governor is much too straight-laced to do this, but governors use technical reasons to veto bills they actually don't like. And when we were doing this with Linda Lingo, for example, where it came up is that she says, I'm vetoing the first gay marriage bill because it technically did not suffice mm. uh, uh, hmm. in, in certain aspects. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I said, what you can do to a governor is go in there and make it, correct it, and hand it back and say, veto it now, or sign it. Uh -huh. you know? So you, you can do this kind of game playing. But they never did that. Well, they never, they never do now. But governors consistently, not this one, I'm sure, but governors consistently have. Mm -hmm. Use technical reasons to, you know, get rid of bills. It gives them some political cover, yeah. Well, yeah, because you can say, you know, it's not me, it's mm -hmm. them. Yeah. And, you and you know, you just hope it never comes back up. <laughs> it, anything else? Any, uh, anything? Well, I, I would just say uh, it's a biennial session. Anything um, that went through this session and didn't make it, or any bill that might get vetoed or sent back for whatever reason, is alive and could be brought up again next session. It could be brought up at any time, but um, bills do carry over to 2020. And that's when you're going to see uh, more of it. So let's go down. Uh, not, we, he's going to sign all of the uh, corrections bills. That's the prediction that my esteemed oh. colleague made. What about you? Uh, I think it would be a good thing to do. I think they're good bills. There's a lot of people that support it. And I can't think of a state that has uh, many states that have more problems with our prisons and jails than Hawaii. 
I think it's a good step forward. And as I said, we we'll probably help him with his own initiatives in terms of trying to get a new jail built. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, you know what we're going to do? We're going to write down all the predictions you guys made today, <laughs> and then we're going to see. Maybe I'll write a letter to uh, Civil Beat <laughs> and tell you, pu publish this. You know? <laughs> but we're going to hold you yeah. as well, right? <laughs> Although you didn't make any predictions. <laughs> yeah, 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 well, I, I, I did. I did, I did predictions. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, right. Anyway, uh, thank you very much for joining us. I hope you enjoyed our program this afternoon. Join us in the future when we find out how good a group of pundits we actually are. <laughs> Aloha. <laughs>